Good morning. How is everyone today? I thought I was live two seconds ago, so I started talking to you guys and realized I hadn't pushed the button yet. So <laughs> it might be one of those kinds of days. Um, I'm just going to come in here and everything is like out of reach for me today. I don't know why. Apparently my arms just got shorter. I'm going to invite everyone as usual. Try to remember to do that. Um, so yeah, as far as everything being out of reach, um, uh, my back has really been bothering me. As some of you know, um, I was in a car accident back in 2014, 2015, and I got hit by somebody who was texting and driving and um, threw my back out. And um, went to the doctors and got it fixed. And a year or so later, I threw my back out, went to the doctors, got it fixed, threw my back out again about another year later. And um, this time they can't, they can't fix it. Um, so um, they said to wait and see if it would go back by itself. And it's, we're going on two years now. Um, so I've been doing um, injections in my back. Um, it's a steroid injection. And it helps with the pain and everything. But um, the point of this little story, while I'm sending out invites to everyone, is that um, last week I let my anger get the best of me. Yep, me, the one that tells everybody to be kind and everything. I'm human too. It happens. Um, Anyway, I let my anger get the best of me and um, tried, or I did, I didn't try, I did, moved a bunch of file cabinets by myself. I just picked them up and moved them, and I have been paying for it ever since. So, I um, had been having some discomfort, to say the least. So my lesson was uh, the only person I hurt with my anger was me, like literally. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'm having even a hard time keeping my arm up there to send the invite. So I'm sorry, it's taking a little longer than normal. I think I'm just about done. So that was my little moral of my story for today was, um, you know, the only person I hurt was definitely myself because you know what, the file cabinets really didn't give a shit and uh, the person I lost my temper with really didn't give a shit. So the only person that hurt from it, got hurt from it was me. Wasn't that a nice little moral to a fairly silly story. All right, so um, today I want to talk a little bit about um, sound with you. Um, but before we do that, I just wanted to um, go over, we have two dates that are coming up that I wanted to make sure I got in there. And so I'm gonna do the two dates, then we're gonna pull a new card, uh, smudge and pull a new card. But I wanna do the two dates just because it's in this big binder, and I want the big binder off my desk. <laughs> um, so January 20th, we're going to be entering um, Aquarius. So we're right now we're still in the phase of the Capricorn, and we're going to be going into Aquarius. So sometime in the next few weeks, um, you know, we'll do another video on Aquarius like we did for Capricorn. Um, so that is coming up. Um, <clears throat> so there's really, I mean, we, we switch all year long. The, that's something that happens every year. Um, you know, it's the same um, time. Um, you know, everybody's seen the little zodiac chart that has the little dates on there. So those are all the same. Those are not something that um, are going to be on different times or different days or things like that. Um, but on the 20th, we are transitioning into the, um, the Aquarius. So uh, that is coming up. 
um, on the 21st, um, we're also going to have a full moon. Sorry, I had an itchy nose this morning, I guess. We're going to have a full moon that is in a um, toner, toner, total lunar eclipse. Um, I'll have to check and see because a lot of times, like um, the one we had a while back, uh, a couple weeks ago, the new moon that was in a partial eclipse, we couldn't see it here. Um, so even though we, we have these um, lunar phase things that are happening, we can't always see them. Um, so I don't remember, uh, Eric looked it up for me and said that like somewhere on the other side of the world in some small country or something, they could see it for like two seconds. <laughs> so um, you may not be in an area that can see it, um, but it is, it is happening. Um, so we will have a full moon and a lo total lunar eclipse. It's also going to be a super moon. Um, so uh, let me just see if I can just kind of read this real quick. Um, so the eclipse occurs um, over a roughly a two and a half year period. And um, it's talking about axes and all this other stuff. Um, so basically, <clears throat> a full moon is a good time to um, do any release work. Um, in the new moon, we set the intentions. And in the full moon, we release um, anything that we need to let go. Um, but um, this is saying with the super moon and the lunar eclipse, um, it's a good time to... Um, push towards any kind of transformation and what's no longer working for you. So that's the releasing part that we, um, so we've talked about those before, but those are the two dates coming up. Um, and then we will um, meet again before the next date. The next date we need to talk about is February 1st, but we'll meet before that. So just trying to keep on track with that for you guys so that you know we, nobody's missing any important dates and so let's do um so smudge real quick here um so yeah we're going to talk about sound today and um we haven't really talked about sound before. Um, a couple other little things I'm going to sneak in today's live for you, though, too. So I'm just going to smudge some of my stuff here and send it out to you guys. It's always a good idea to smudge your electronic devices. A lot of negative energy comes through them. Um, I did want to show you real quick my new charcoal burner. So this is actually um, a Chinese press. So they would put um, hot coals in here and um, use it to press their clothes. Um, but I use it um, for my charcoal discs and my incense because it's made to withstand that heat. Um, I do recommend if you have one or buy one that you still do, um, like I have a little plate that I put it on um, because uh, first of all, I have my mesa mat here, my, my altar mat, and it's kind of a vinyl-y and I'm afraid it might melt, but also my table is wood and I don't want it to um, blacken my wood table. So that was something I wanted to show you that was new. Um, I bought that at an antique store in Littleton, uh, the Purple Peacock. Um, so they have a lot of really neat stuff. It's a big place, and you really kind of have to walk around and look for the for the items. But they do have a really a, a lot of really neat items, um, things that would go into your metaphysical practice if you so choose. So Main Street in Littleton. So you can hit up the Purple Peacock, and you can hit up. Um, Alakai and there's a new store um, it's a crystal store The Missing Piece and it's a crystal shop 
he has crystals that he mines himself, um, which is really cool because he actually has um, crystals from Stock, New Hampshire, from Percy Peaks. And, um, but he's got some from um, different places in New Hampshire. Um, I think he's got some from Maine. And I know he's got some from New York because he had some um, Herkimer diamonds and Herkimer diamonds only come from Herkimer, New York. Um, but yeah, he can tell you where all his crystals came from and stuff. So actually I take that back. Not all his crystals dug up himself because he said he did buy out an estate um, of crystals. So take that back. All right. Um, so I guess I'm going to start with our sound. It's not a real long one for today, so I knew I was going to have some time to, to fit some other stuff in here. And my um, space is very messy right now. I've had a class on Monday, but I didn't get to make it, so I did it Tuesday, and then I had a class last night. So um, my space is just kind of messy. Um, so let's see here. not have and again I've had back-to-back -back classes so um, I didn't have a chance to write out my notes so um, so I am just stealing them off the worksheet usually I write them down and highlight the points that I really want to um, talk about um, so couple of the things that I wanted to talk about, um, and, and she doesn't have everything down here that I wanted, so, um, but that's okay. So I've never really talked about sound um, with you because it doesn't really resonate with me very much, or I should I should say it didn't really resonate with me very much, but mostly that's because I didn't know a lot about it, um, which is why I like to learn things. Um, sorry, my little crystal grid here is out of, all out of whack here, so I keep trying to fix it, but then I keep bumping it again. Um, so sound, in, and it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't really something that resonated with me because I didn't really know a lot about it. And now in class, we've, we just started learning about it a little bit. Um, in my first kit, my January kit, comes all kinds of stuff. Um, and I, I think I've showed you this. Um, I got all these different herbs. There's four little packets like this. And then I got um, a bunch of um, essential oils. And it comes with this beautiful mat that I have here that you can't see. And um, then I have all my crystals that it came with to do a crystal grid. And it came with a beautiful candle. Where I'm going with this, there is a point is our main piece that came this month is a um, Ganesha bell. And um, so I was like, what, what do I do with this? <laughs> but um, this is where um, some of the sound comes in. So um, like I said, I was kind of skeptical about it because I'm like, how does sound clear a room? How does sound clear but sound is vibration. So um, when you make sound, the vibration goes throughout. And that's how somebody else hears it somewhere else. It's because the, the, the vibration, the sound waves. Um, so one of the things we've been doing is ringing our bells. <laughs> it's kind of loud, but um, so we've been doing that. So, but that's a good way to think about it is that sound is a vibration, just like, um, your crystals give off a vibration. Does that make sense? So there are lots of different sounds. Um, there is the, a bell you can ring. Um, there are drums that you can use, um, you can make your own. Um, I will someday have a drum. You can buy fairly inexpensive drums, but um, I'm the type of person that typically I won't go out and buy a drum just to buy a drum. If I'm gonna buy one, 
because I want one, I'm going to wait until I find the one I like. Just like it took me forever to buy my pendulum. I wanted the right, I didn't want to just go buy a pendulum so I'd have a pendulum. I wanted the one that I wanted. Um, so it'll be the same for the drum with me. So I will, um, it'll probably take me a while because I don't frequent places that sell drums. Um, you can find them on Etsy, on eBay, um, on Amazon and stuff, but um, I'm just waiting till I find my drum. So anyway, that's another way. Um, you can use a rattle. Um, so there are, there's a, like, you can get Native American rattles or um, a shaman rattle. Um, I am actually going to attempt to make my own rattle. Um, kind of going all over the place here today. Sorry. Last night's class, we needed a mala. And a mala is a string of beads that have 108. Um, you can use a string that has like 54 and go around twice. Um, but um, typically it's a strand of beads that has 108. Now I bought this huge strand of, um, they're actually seeds. And um, it was huge. And um, so I didn't have time to go out and buy a mala because, like I said, I watched the class Tuesday, which was supposed to be for Monday, that told me I needed a um, she doesn't say you need, but if you have one, she recommends you bring it to the class. So, um, so I found that out on Tuesday that I should have a mala for Wednesday. And, um, immediately I thought of, I have that huge, typically they're be they're beads, they're stones, like they're usually some sort of stone, some sort of crystal. Um, but I said, normally, um, I, I don't have, I didn't have time to do that. Um, so I thought of these right away. And what I did is I um, I cut it into oops, stuck on my foot. Um, I cut it into so I have I made two malas out of it. Um, and you can see here I, I left the string pretty long at where I tied it because that's how I know where the um, beginning and end are. Um, but typically they have some sort of little top tassel thingy here, so. Um, I'm going to see what I can find for some sort of little tassel thing. But anyhow, there was beads left over from this. After I cut it in two, I had probably 20 or 30 beads left where I'm going with the story. And I'm going to use these beads, seeds, they're actually seeds, to um, make a rattle. So that's where that goes. <laughs> so, you know... Um, you know, I do post things to sell on here and stuff, but, um, you know, I always encourage if you have a local shop, um, to purchase from there, or if you have things that you can repurpose in your home, you know, certainly do that as well. Um, whatever, um, feels right for you. So anyway, back to the sound. So I'm going to make a rattle. So we have bells. We have drums, we have rattles, um, bells, drums, rattles, and then we have music in itself. Um, there's horns and stuff, but those are typically not used very much um, in, in ceremonies. Um, there's a more like a warp, <laughs> a warp thing um, to blow the horn. Um, so, um, but the one that I did want to talk to you today about, and I apologize because um, the notes are not as good as I was hoping they were going to be. Um, but all music has some sort of frequency. And so uh, different frequencies have different effects on your body. The different vibrations coming in have different effects on your body. Um, so there is a, um, it's called this, and I hope I say it right, solfeggio frequencies, because you guys know I'm horrible with pronouncing things. Um, and they range in um, different scale, obviously. And um, 
the one that I have been using, and again, I apologize, these notes are not what I was hoping for. Um, the one I've been using is a 174. So it, if you wanted to try to um, go on YouTube or I found mine on Amazon Music, just type in 174HZ. And maybe I'll put some links up there for you. Um, I'll, I'll see if I can sh pull up it on my Amazon Music and share it. If not, I can definitely share YouTube's. Um, but I'll see if I can put a couple links up there for you. So, um, so there are, to my knowledge, nine different um, Selvegio Selvegio frequencies, and um, they're all got, they all have three numbers in them. And what's interesting about them is when you add them all up, they either equal out to three, six, or nine. So we same like like when you did your birth chart. So if you take one plus seven plus four and um, add that up, you got twelve. So then if you take one and two, it equals three. Um, so all of the um, nine Selvegio numbers equals three, six, or nine. So that's pretty cool. Just kind of one of those weird things that happens. Um, it's like coincidence. Mm, I think not. Um, so, and that all goes back into, and again, I don't have um, time to go into all of it, but if anybody is in, um, familiar with Nikola Tesla, um, he was a very brilliant man. And um, he... Um, I don't know what's the word I want to know. Um, he was also interested in this Selvegio number format of coming to three, six, and nine. Um, so there's actually a little quote here that says, "If you know the magnificence of the three, six, and nine, then you know then you would have a key to the universe." So that was from Nikola Tesla, who um, I think is a pretty cool guy. If you watch TV, um, Nikola Tesla has been made into a vampire. He's been made into a mad scientist um, and all that. But um, I don't think he was a vampire. I could be wrong, but I don't think he was a vampire. <laughs> um so it's just very interesting how the Salvegio numbers fall into um, numerology, into that three, six, and nine. Um, but so the one um, we're going to talk about today is the one that I've been using. Like I said, it's the 174. And if you wanted to find it yourself, just type in 174HZ. And um, so this is the lowest tone on the chart. Um, as the chart goes up, the frequency goes up. Um, and um, each one is associated with a, um, I don't want to say ailment, because that's not really quite right, um, a physical um, I don't want to say pain either, because that's not really right either. But um, So anyway, um, so the 174 is um, an anesthetic. So it would help resolve pain. Um, it's also really good for sleep. Um, it's also good for um, relieving emotional pain. Um, so one of the reasons I was interested in this one is it cut, because it says that it, it is supposed to help um, back pain, leg pain, foot pain, and migraines. And I just told you guys that I've been having back pain. Um, I've also been um, transitioning from mother to crone, and I've been having some migraines with that. Um, so um, that was another point for me. And you will also know that I have horrible insomnia. And so um, this is going to help with um, rest and back pain and migraine. So I was like, this is perfect. This is um, exactly what I need to, to start with. Um, 
So it's the lowest one. It was the first one we were learning about, and it was the one that was like, well, I think that's the one I need. Um, I will get a list of what all of them are. I thought my notes were going to have that, but they do not. Um, I will get a list of the nine and what each one is related to and get it posted up there for you. Um, so if, um, because the 174 may not um, resonate with you, may not, you may not have any of those things. You may have something else um, that you're more interested in experimenting with the sound. Um, so I will get the list of the nine and get them posted. Uh, might might take me a day or two, but I will get them up there and get them posted. And I just remembered I didn't pull a card again. I'm going to pull the deck out just so um, I don't forget. All right. So, um, so what I've been doing is, um, like I said, I went to Amazon Prime um, and uh, my, because I have Amazon Music. Amazon Prime Music, and I get a lot of my music for free there. Um, so I went on to Amazon Prime, and I just um, typed in the one seven to music because sorry, if you go to just the shopping cart part to the Prime part, it's gonna bring you up to like ones you can purchase, or like actual like CDs. If that's what you want, that's fine. Um, but I just go into I have an app that's Amazon Music because I have Prime and my music is free. Um, so I just typed in the 174HZ. And it brought up, I don't know, probably a dozen free ones. There are certainly ones you can buy. I'm like, why am I going to buy one when I got 12 here that are free? So I added them to a playlist that I have titled Meditation. And I added them all into that playlist. So um, at nighttime, when I go to bed, all I have to do is click into my Amazon Music, click into my playlist, click into meditation, and hit play and put my earbuds in. Eric would be perfectly fine with me to play it out loud, but that doesn't do away with his snoring. <laughs> So by putting the earbuds in and making the music just right here, it helps block out his snoring. But if you don't have that issue of a snoring husband, um, you can certainly just, um, you know, play it on your phone or tablet or whatever and, and play it um, in the room. Um, and it will work just as well. So it doesn't really matter. Um, but I did that um, Tuesday night. And um, each one of these, the songs that I downloaded was about nine, a little, between nine to 10 minutes long. And I tell you before, like the third one was done, I was out. Um, so I was like excited. So I did it again last night and listened to them. And I listened to maybe four or five last night before I fell asleep. Um, but that is definitely, um, an, a big improvement. Um, so, like I said, they're about 10 minutes long a piece. So I laid there for 40 or 50 minutes before I fell asleep. There are nights that I, I lay awake literally all night long that I get, I don't sleep at all. And, but typically I, I'm usually awake for two to three hours um, before I actually fall asleep. So I go to bed around 11 and I usually fall asleep somewhere between two and three and then get up for seven. But last night I fell asleep within the hour and the night before I fell asleep within the half hour. I think it took me a little bit longer last night because um, after class I had a lot of stuff going on in my mind. Um, so we did a, um, a journey, a meditation last night in class. And so I just had a lot of thoughts in my head so I think that's why it just because I was having a really hard time even though I was completely exhausted um, and I was actually in bed at like 10 o'clock last night um, so I was just completely exhausted and um, but I still had a lot going on in my head about my meditation so 
If you want to know about my meditation, uh, I've got a few minutes I can tell you before we pull a card. Um, so when you go into meditation or journey, as um, Athena calls it, and she drummed the whole time. So she just had a nice steady drum beat going the whole time. And she kind of tells you before. Um, so it's kind of guided, but she doesn't do it during. So before the meditation, she said to go ahead and set an attention or um, not really set an attention, but more like ask what we needed to be cleared out of a certain path. So my question was, help me clear my path to opening my third eye. So that was my question. Because Ganesha is um, the elephant. And so he's a big, strong guy. And that's one of his things is, is helping you clear your path. Um, so um, I asked him to help me clear my path to doing what I needed to do to open my third eye. So, kind of funny story, actually. Everybody's meditations are different. But, um, so she told us, you know, she says, picture Ganesha coming to you. So once the drum started, I, I did that. And then she said, and then um, ask Ganesha your question. So I did. And I... In my meditation, I visioned him turning and walking. And um, so Athena's playing this drum. And um, <laughs> I'm having this really hard time because I'm just picturing Ganesha's butt going to the drum. <clears throat> so this big elephant butt in front of me. <clears throat> so meditations can go anywhere. <laughs> so anyway, um, once we got past Ganesha getting jiggy with it, um, and I had asked him to clear the obstacles for my path for my third eye. In my meditation, it was just me and him. There was like nothing. There was no path, really. Um, there was nothing. It was just well, open. It was like we were in the desert. And I'm like, okay, so where's the path? <laughs> in my head, obviously. And, you know, I'm like asking Ganesha, where's, where's my path? And... He kept stepping off to the side of me and just like going, go. And I'm like, no, you're supposed to be, I'm supposed to follow you. Um, I'm, supposed to, you're sp I'm supposed to follow you. You're supposed to clear the path. And he kept just being beside me and being like, no. <laughs> so my first thought is, okay, this vis this meditation, this visual is like gone wrong. I'm, I'm doing something wrong. And then, you know, I remember I've told you people this and, and Athena has told me and millions other that it's never wrong. Sometimes we don't understand it, but it's not wrong. So um, when I sat there and kind of thought about it, um, I'm like, okay. So to me, that was Ganesha being like, there's, there's nothing in your path. There's nothing stop. There's nothing stopping you. There's no boulders. There's no trees. There's no. There's nothing in in front of you that's stopping you from doing what you want to do. Um, the only one that was stopping me was me because I'm like, no, something's supposed to happen. You're supposed to do something. You're supposed to make something happen. And I was waiting for him to do something, and he was like, no, just just go. <laughs> you can just go. And um, so. I took that as the only person that's really standing in my own way is, is me. There's, there's no big boulders. There's no big obstacles. Um, just me having to be more open in general is how I took it. So that was my meditation for last night. Um, we still have a few more minutes. I will pull a card. I'm just going to save it for last now because um, we didn't do it first like I had planned. Um, so when we get all these herbs, we burn them on our um, charcoal. But we're also going to be making, and I've showed you this, my cloth with my sari ribbon. We're going to make some medicine bundles in next Wednesday. So we'll talk about that. 
a little bit probably on the, the Thursday after about making a medicine bundle. So if anybody's interested, it's just this piece of cloth, um, probably like 12 by 12 piece of cloth, if anybody was interested in trying to make one of those. And a ribbon, it doesn't have to be a sari ribbon, it can be any kind of ribbon. Um, if you got an old um, shirt or something that's got a rip or a stain in it, you can rip it into um, strands and make your own if you're interested in doing that. And then it's going to be um, red sandalwood. And since I got my notes here, I might as well just tell you. So red sandalwood is a um, related to the fire element. And it's good for your root chakra. And um, let's see here. Removes neg neg negativity and brings success. Um, so um, it would be something you could use instead of a white sage smudge. So if you wanted to put this on your charcoal and um, use that as a smudge, you could certainly do that. So that's red sandalwood. That'll be used in our medicine bag. Uh, let's see here. Where are um, the next one is motherwort. And that is related to the water element. And let's see here. So this promotes spiritual healing, inner trust, and confidence in the universe. Um, so this is really good also. Um, for um, that time of the month. So if you suffer from symptoms from PMS, this is a really good one you might want to have around. Um, and you can buy these, I think, like at the Healthy Rhino. Um, some of them, like bay, one of the next ones is bay leaves. You can buy bay leaves in any grocery store. Um, so some of them are pretty easy to find. Other ones are a little bit more difficult. Um, but motherwort, um, you could probably find at um, like an herb shop. There's two or three of them in Littleton as well. Um, so um, good for PMS and good for childbirth. So um, you could have that incense going um, while you're giving birth. Most hospitals probably would not let you do that. Um, so... <laughs> but if you're home birthing, it's an option. Uh, cedar berries. I love the smell of these. My husband loves the smell of cedar, so it just kind of fits. Um, it's a fire. It's related to the fire element. And let's see here. Purifies and aids in healing. Um, so uh, it's also good for attracting luck and prosperity. and then the bay leaves so again you can just I, I actually have like two or three containers of bay leaves in my kitchen because you've probably seen me i write my new moon intentions on my bay leaves and put them in um, my jar another thing you can do is write your um, intention on it and burn it um, you can also write things you want to let go on your bay leaf and burn it um, so there's a story that if you write something on a bay leaf and burn it, it will happen. There's like, no, the universe will get it and it will happen. So um, bay leaves are very, very um, potent in that way. Um, we're also going to be, one of the dates that's coming up for February is in bulk. And um, I use bay leaves in that ceremony as well. So... Bay leaves are pretty important to a lot of different um, aspects of the metaphysical. Um, but uh, it is a fire element. And um, so it's good for releasing closure. Um, and um, makes your wishes come true, which is what I just told you. Um, it's good for healing, protective, purifying, and banishing. Um, there's also a little story behind this that... If you take a bay leaf and with your partner, break it in half and 
he or she keeps half and you keep half, that you will be faithful to each other forever. I'm not going to try that. What's it going to hurt to break a baby? So, that was some of the things we did. Um, while I'm here, I do have a, a, a very few minutes, but I will um, go over. Might as well finish up here. Um, one of the essential oils we got was star anise. And um, it is air and water. And um, it is good um, for, um, let's see here, love, money, and health. And then we go on to blue chamomile. I wish I could have a way to show you this because it really is blue. Like it is like blue, blue. Um, so blue chamomile. And that is also for fire and um, water. And it is good for um, skin. So um, it would be good to put in your bath. Um, cam chamomile is always like a calming, relaxing, um, it's good for your throat chakra, which is one of the things I liked about it. Um, <coughs> and it's supposed to be protective. And then we go on to the Mogra Atar. And you can see it spilled a little bit when I was using it in the label got a little wet and it started to come off but this is for um, your element of earth and water it is good for your solar plexus but it's really good for your heart chakra um, as well and um, so this is really good for any kind of heart healing it is also really good um, let's see here for unconditional love inner strength um, transformation and raising your sexual vibration. So in class, we got those three. Then we got a bottle of jojoba oil, which is um, my carrier oil. And you can see um, I used about half of it. So I got a new bottle and I put, um, you know, like you can see here, the, the Mogar Atar, I used about half of that bottle. And the blue chamomile, I didn't use hardly any. You can see that it's just just down a little bit. And then the um, star anus, which is a very licorice-y. Um, makes me think of black licorice, and it's not really a smell that I'm fond of, but I wanted to, to have it in there. So literally, like, I put, like, two drops in there. And um, so then we um, put that in there with our jojoba oil. So everybody in class had these three and they could mix and match it however they want um, to make the smell that they wanted. And then um, it came with a little label and I named mine Connect because I used um, the blue chamomile to connect with my throat chakra and my I used it to connect with uh, two or three of them were for water elements. So I wanted to connect with my water element. And um, of course it says the sexual vibration. So we want to connect with our um, significant other. And um, so yeah, so I just thought connect was a good name for it. So I'm actually going to um, put some on just because I want you to see um, once we made it, I made it on Tuesday. I was supposed to make it on Monday, but I made it on Tuesday. You let it set in the jojoba oil for 24 hours um, because it will um, smell a little different after it has set. But I'm hoping I can get it to show you guys. Can you, I don't want to drip it on my computer. Can you see that that is blue? Can you, I don't know if you can see that it's blue because it's pulled that blue um, from the, the chamomile. Usually I don't put it on my hands. But mine is very sweet smelling. Even though I used a lot of the um, Mogar, Mogar Atar, the blue chamomile um, and the star anise um, really um, kind of overpower it a little bit, even though I used a lot less. Um, 
So it's a very sweet, very sweet smell. Um, so now, and when I was making my beads, I had put the, um, my Connect perfume on my hands and rubbed them all over my beads. Seeds, I don't remember, seeds, just to be correct. Um, all right, so last thing here, we're gonna pull a card real quick and then I have to go. All right, so um, the card that we had talked about last Thursday was Inspired Innovation. And so we're gonna put that one back. And we're going to just pull a card real quick. And that's how we'll end. It should have been how we started, um, but it's how we'll end instead. <laughs> that's what happens when you do live. Boo-boos happen. But again, everything's supposed to happen for a reason, right? All right, so the card that I am pulling for us for this week for our chakra card. is higher consciousness all right so this is a throat chakra um so a crystal is celestite and an herb is lemongrass um, i have lemongrass uh, essential oils and uh, i use that quite a bit actually um so let me read it and then i'll just kind of show you the card um at any given moment the con consciousness of your higher self is available to you and speaks through you. When presented with an opportunity to express your thoughts, ask yourself this question, what would my higher self say? Give it a voice and let it make its divine presence known using yours. Your highest self is the lightest, easiest, most fluid form of your true nature. Be intentional about cultivating your relationship with this essence. So my throat chakra and my eye chakra are something that I'm constantly working with. Um, so that is the card. And um, I don't believe I have any Celestite. I'll have to take a look. All right. With that, I do need to say goodbye. I need to get in my car and go to work so I'm not late and don't get in trouble. Um, so lots of love to all of you. Thanks for popping on again. If you watch this later, just kind of put a comment in there, watched, um, thumbs up or something, just so I know that, um, you guys are watching and I'm not just talking to myself every morning. Um, and remember to be kind because your kindness could change your day and somebody else's too. So thanks. Lots of love.